Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. <laughs> Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got another free book for you today. Jumping the gun a little bit for next month. Uh, the Raiders is one of the most popular books on, in the game this year. Uh, so I decided to give that out. The book itself is about two hours long, so I have to break it up into two parts. So as always, if you want to see part two tomorrow, uh, let me know in the comment section with the like button. I'll put out part two. Today I'm putting out all single back plays from the Rares playbook. It's about 45 minutes long. Uh, and then tomorrow, like I said, I got I-Form and Shotgun all in one video. So hit the like button if you want to see that. Other than that, let's go and let's get right into the video. Next up, we got the PA Jet Sweep. Ready? So this is an interesting play. I mean, you're going to have that X route um, under the coverages a lot of times. It's just a nice, it's almost like a, a bubble screen with no blocking. <laughs> so it's an interesting play. It's a really good setup. I can't make any other adjustments, uh, which sucks, but that's just how it is. <laughs> they don't, you know, they don't let you make adjustments on screenplays anymore. But this is the guy anyway. I mean, that's who I want to, uh, I want to hit. He just gets forgotten a lot of times. I don't think any of the other routes are really too consistent necessarily, but like I said, this is really the bread and butter of it anyway. Like I said, I mean, we got the B route here. I don't know if that was a cover two. You can see how all these stretching routes pull the cover twos apart. So I would say this is definitely B. That's your cover two read. Uh, other than that, your cover three, cover four. You're going to be hitting this guy underneath cover one. As you can see, the, the man cover guy was coming over late. You know what I'm saying? He's going to be an option uh, for pretty much every coverage other than cover two. So here's cover three. Like I said, I already know, you know, the X route's going to be open. Just hit it to him in stride and just, just burn it. Just hit the burners up the field. I don't even have my fastest running back or my fastest receiver running that. If I did, it'd probably be even more yards. Uh, but a really interesting play, really cheesy play. Next up, we got the PA X burst cross. This play here, I'm just going to put A on a drag. If it's a man coverage, the uh, the B route's going to have a lot of success. Um, because of the way that, well, actually the Y route too, I mean, he's just wide open, so I don't know what, maybe there were blitz in there. Um, <laughs> but your crossing routes typically don't have a lot of success this year. The, the man coverage is pretty overpowered, but you can see, you can see how the, um, you know, these routes are a little bit different. They, they, the, the more times that they have um, little hitches in it like they do, this guy's just getting forgotten completely. But the more hitches they have in the route, the better they are against man coverage. So they, these have like several throughout the course of the route. This is why they get open. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Y route especially is just getting forgotten quite a bit here. So let's see if that continues. Like I said, those crossing routes are going to be really good against zone as well outside. Oh man, I had a touchdown there. I really, I really put on some jukes there and had and ha would have had it. Play's probably going to be best run against cover two because of the angle that these guys are taking. But I mean, it's just they're running so fast. The zones just they just get sat on. You know what I mean? And you can't use it between them because you got to choose. You know what I mean? So you're really not gonna. Who are you going to choose? I mean, they're both getting open on each side. Next up, we got the jet sweep. This obviously mirrors the motion of the passing play. They're meant to work together. Uh, all you really want to do, though, is you want to typically burn this to the outside. I don't think, uh, I mean, there's a lane inside, but I don't think you're necessarily going to get a ton doing that. This is a unique play. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a, a money play, but um, it's something, you know. If you have a, a fast receiver like Tyreek Hill, throw in this little bit of trickery, and you can have a nice play here and there. So that's a good play, but go ahead and move on. Next up, we got the halfback zone week. So, you know, this is the same setup where the motioning, uh, the motioning fullback comes over. Um, it's just, you know, it's a little bit of a different play. It's not a counter play. It's just an inside zone play. Pretty good setup. These inside zone plays are pretty good. Uh, when it's a man, though, you can see he pulls an extra defender across, which isn't necessarily the best idea. So this might be best used run against zones. But you can see I'm getting, you know, a couple yards every time, four or five yards every time. It's just a good inside run play. I mean, you got to have you gotta have inside run plays to match the outside run plays. And then ultimately, I'm trying to bounce it outside anyway. But you can see there's pretty much always a lane there. That's the idea. That's all that really matters. So let's go ahead and let's get that lane one more time. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm always going to end up bouncing it outside. But I'm getting daylight inside. That's all that really matters. So good run play. Next up out of the single back bunch base, we got the Z spot. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put my B route on a streak. I can also put this guy, the, the square route on an in route or something like that. It doesn't really matter. 
But basically, I mean, if, it's, if this guy's open right away, I'm going to work my way back. If he's open right away, I'm going to take it for a catch and run. Put your fastest guy there possible. Um, I didn't necessarily do that, but I always recommend it. Um, and then, like I said, if he's not open, a lot of times the guy, you know, he, if he's covered down low, the guy above is going to be open. It's going to be that slant route or that outside post route. So that's pretty much your read. You're reading high and low. One of them is going to be open pretty much every time. Just take it. Don't ask no questions. You know what I'm saying? Don't force it to nothing that you don't need to be. Other than that, the B route sometimes can get open up the seam of cover two. Um, but this guy's a good cover two play outside. It's a little bit safer, the inside. The inside cover twos don't really work as well this year because the safeties kind of converge in the middle. Next up, we got the halfback counter. Another counter play, I mean, you know, like I said, to me, some of the best run plays in the game are counter plays. This one out of the bunch is no different. One more time. One more time. There we go. Get a nice inside run. Sometimes that's where it's going to be. Here we go. We're going to get outside. Like I said, that if they if they the defensive end's over aggressive, shoots outside. You go inside. You get a nice play. If he hesitates, right here, I'm going to take it outside. It's real simple. Real simple concept. These counter plays can be found everywhere, and they all are pretty much run the same. Next up, we have the four verticals. This play here, I'm going to put uh, put more on a drag. If it's a cover two, um, that drag will come in handy to pull coverage back for Samuel. This whole play is really about the B route. Um, although the RB route and the A route will get open, you can see this guy here just got just gets open way way more to the outside, whether it's cover three, cover four. Um, it doesn't really matter. Here's a cover three or cover one. If it's a cover one, I'm hitting a home run. If it's a cover three, um, I'll know right away because the cornerback drops back, and then I'll just hit him underneath. If I make a miss, I can I can take it up the sideline. You know, it, it's a scenario that can play out. Um, I could also put uh, this guy in a drag. Like I know this isn't a cover two, so I can put him on a, a slant if I want. Um, this might be a cover one. No, it's still not. So they keep hitting me with cover threes. Um, so you know, but that's like stealing candy from a baby. I mean, it's just so it's so easy. So easy. So here we go. We're gonna do this again. Like I said, this might be a cover two. Obviously not though, because the cornerback dropped back so far. Um, it's a cover one. That's an interesting look. <laughs> if it is a cover one, Samuel's gonna be a home run. Um, these inside routes, I, you know, I forget about them. But oh, here's a blitz. There we go. So like I guess that's easy. <laughs> They're gonna send a house blitz like that. You're gonna have a lot of openings. So, had to pick a cover one because they're not going to give it to me otherwise. Um, this is pretty much going to be, you know, just going to wait till he turns up the field. And, you know, you can bullet, lob, whatever you want, as long as you get separation. He didn't catch it there. I mean, it's a pretty good cornerback covering my receiver. Um, but you can see he's going to get passed pretty much every time. Next up, we got the PA boot slide again. Different one. Uh, you know, I like this play. I mean, there's just, you know, there's a lot going on here. Um, you could always put that one receiver streaking on a, on a comeback route, too, but I find it kind of gets in the way of what these other receivers are doing. But the way they're just streaking across the field, I mean, one of them's going to get open pretty much every time. And it's hard to use her all those levels. As you see right there, actually, it's, I get sacked. No big deal. But like I said, you're going to cancel that play action. The B route's a really good route. The, the, every one of the crossing routes is a good route for, for different coverages, and your user's not going to have a shot covering all these. Um, they might start low, they might start high, but they're, they're, somebody's going to get open pretty much every time. You just have to you know, just have to wait it out. You know, like right there, he was being covered, but I knew he was going to pass him on. And that's exactly what happened. I knew that coverage was going to pass him on, so. Don't necessarily have the best routes here for man. Although the A route is pretty good. It's pretty good against man as I overthrow that there. But he would, I mean, it was there. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't the worst decision ever it was a close a close uh completion and then like i said if you if you have a man i really only have comeback routes that's pretty much all i got so if you do not run this against any, against um against man because you know you don't have a play for man i mean that was a man but i, I switched to a comeback route before the play and then i threw it quick because i saw the safeties coming down so you know you, you can do can do your man option as I accidentally mess up the play entirely. Um, but like I said, they're still gonna, everybody's gonna be open. I, mean, I don't need that streak. 
You know what I mean? It's it, it, it's really not essential. You know, I, I can do the comeback, but then the comeback kind of gets in the way. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I said, not in the man scenario. Obviously, it doesn't get in the way, but <laughs> it's really up to you. Whether you want to do the comeback or not. Let's go ahead and do this one more time. Like I said, that's actually a pretty good man beater right there. I've noticed that that works. Next up out of the single back bunch, we got the quick pitch. Uh, if you can run just like this, I mean, in the past, I've motioned out that farthest receiver. Um, oh, well, you got lit up there, man. Like you punched him in the jaw. But you can see it was a big run. Uh, but, yeah, I find it's good just to run just like this. I don't necessarily um, need to make any motions. I think it's actually pretty good how, as it is. Here go. Here go. What is here we go. Like I said, we're getting that now. Oh, man. Just got to hold that block down, man. Just got to hold that block down. So I'm going to try motioning out this receiver just to see, you know, what the difference is. And you can see right there, I guess I got a little bit better, a little bit better spacing by motioning out the receiver. So we'll do that one more time. Like I said, he backs off a little bit, which is part of the reason motioning out that receiver is always been so successful for me is it, is it backs away the cornerback and then we get a nice big easy run so we gotta do that one more time motion him out and then like I said it just helps me to get to the edge it's not always a huge play but you can see I got much more than I did before so motioning him out like I said cornerback drops off and it's going to make it easier for me. And I would have been gone, man. It's one dude to beat. That Deion Jones, man. Speedy middle linebacker. Son of a bitch. It's like right here. He dropped down. So I know I'm probably going to have to cut this short. Actually, I don't. Yeah, no. He, uh, he must have dropped off or got blocked out of the way or something. But you can see it's a much easier run play with um, with the motion, which matches a lot, of pump, uh, a lot of pass plays that I put out anyway. <laughs> so he shouldn't have an issue there. Like I said, he just got, man, he just came. That dude, that safety, typically those safeties blow that up. That dude was coming down to blow that up, and it didn't work out for him. He got blocked twice. So one more time. Just to show some consistency here. With the new setup. Oh, man, come on, bro. That dude, he's just, he just playing lights out. He's really disrupting some things. <laughs> Emotional to the wrong guy, but it doesn't really matter. I'm willing to bet. Let's just see. It's the same idea. Like I said, it didn't matter. Still got a big run play out of it. Still close to 10 yards. Next up, we got the bench. This play right here, I mean, I went over this in previous formations. These, these outside routes, I mean, that was a bad throw. He didn't catch it, but you can see he was open. Whether it's cover two, cover three, even cover four, these routes tend to get there. And then you also have your, your, your you know, your little out routes here which get open I mean this is just a really really good play this year uh, one of my more favorite I would say uh, I'll definitely be running it I probably should have threw the man I, that was, I threw in the double coverage right there that wasn't the best move so I'm gonna go ahead and reduce a couple times like I said that uh, they chip off the deeper route I'll take the underneath catch and run all game so one more time and there we go. Like I said, that's, I mean, I'll take that underneath route. It's it's there. Next up out of the single back deuce close, we got the counter weak. These counter plays, they're all productive, except for when you got a, a blitz like that coming into it. But I still got outside of it. Because <laughs> like I said, the blocking's pretty sticky. But you're really, once again, you're just reading this outside guy. If he hesitates, you're taking it outside. You know what I'm saying? If he, if he crashes outside and takes some stuff out of the play, you're going inside. Uh, but you really can't lose. Like right there, hesitated. So I'm going to sprint outside, although this guy's right up my butt. Right behind me. But I still got 10 yards without even trying. Maybe more. I'm not sure. I fell forward. Um, so these, these counter plays are all pretty good. Right there. Boom. He's waiting. Dude's waiting to get blocked. He's going to go right down the field. Look at that. Really easy play. Really good run formation. You're going to see a lot of good run plays in this. And then that right there, he goes inside. So I had, He went outside, so I had to go inside. But there was a guy waiting. It's not always going to be the way. So he's waiting again, waiting to get blocked. And I'm just going to juke that dude out of his shoes. I'm not going to get tackled by the first guy. Next up, we got the Fly Sweep New Anim Test. I'm guessing that they, <laughs> I'm guessing that EA didn't finish putting that in because it says New Animation Test. Interesting. So this is a new animation. Um, and this is a tight end running this, which, you know, hey, it's still pretty good. <laughs> 
still a pretty good run. So it's just a jet sweep. Uh, we've seen this, I mean, it's, like I said, the blocking is great. I'm getting more out of this than I do out of typical normal jet sweeps. Here we go, here we go. One more time. Like I said, we're just getting that edge pretty easy. So, obviously when they test it, it's pretty OP. So here we go. I've yet to get have an issue. <laughs> I've yet to have an issue with this run. So definitely Ready. test well. Like I said, this is this is OP. Like it's not. They ne they they obviously didn't tone this down. Ready. <laughs> so so we caught a typo in EA's uh, <laughs> in EA's programming. And obviously, when they put this play in, they put it in really glitchy because it's really strong. I haven't yet to, um, I've yet to get a negative, <laughs> a neg of any kind. I mean, I, I, I could probably, I'm sure there's a way I could substitute a receiver for this tight end. But what a, what a good, I mean, this is just, oof. There's, there's no, there's nothing, there's no bad runs here. I want to keep going until I get a bad run. I, I think I might be doing this for a long time if that's the case. Oh, man. Next up, we get the halfback stretch. Another really good run formation or run play from this formation. I mean, there's just you know really really wide blocking as I make two guys miss, two guys miss with a nasty juke from uh, Christian McCaffrey. This guy is amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll just hit this once or twice more. Like I said, I'll just take him out, stretching as far as I mean. It's just you know this is just a really top notch run formation to be honest. So here we got the cover through safety on the one side. I'm obviously going to want to go to the other side. Set these guys up. You know, it's just a really consistent run. Next up, we got the jet sweep. So, you know, no real setup here, obviously. Just a good play to mix in. Uh, you know, I, once again, I forgot to put my fastest receiver. <laughs> Always have your fast receiver running these guys, but... Um, you know, I'm still. This is still a really successful play. These jet sweeps. Um, they have a pretty good success ratio. And uh, see right there, I turned it up. I didn't want to wait till I got outside. I'll just take what I can get. But um, but yeah, these have a high a high hit ratio for real. I mean, they the blocking on them is pretty solid. In certain formations, I find. So it's real easy. Just like I said, make sure your fastest guy is running this. Don't go too far behind the line of scrimmage just in case you're going to take a loss. If you take a loss, it's only like a yard or two. It's no big deal. Next up, we got the stretch alert screen. It's a real easy read. If it's a man coverage, you're going to run it. If it's not, you're going to, if it's a zone coverage, you're going to hit this guy uh, because typically the man coverage will play that a lot better. I mean, if it's a cover two, you probably don't want to hit this route either if it's a cover two hard flat. But the easiest way to remember it um, is you're going to want to do, oh, it's <laughs> really, Oh man, we're just getting getting some nice, nice looks right here. Like I said, if it's a man, there won't be any cornerbacks out there, so that's typically going to be the way to go. I mean, I'm not getting a huge gain every time, but you know, you can see, um, you know, there is an advantage. Like I said, right here, I get my block, got my one-on-one. -on -one. You know what I'm saying? This is one of those screens that I'd run pretty much, pretty much every time until I get that man coverage. Oof. Until I get a man coverage, which like I said, I'm not getting. I'm getting hit though. So still no man coverage. I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna get it out there. He's gonna get on that block. Like I said, I don't typically like these type of plays with the screens, but this particular one's really good. Next up we got the switch. Ready! I mean this play here, I mean I've I've exploited stuff like this pretty much all year. You don't even have to really make any adjustments. I mean, if it's a cover three, this uh, this A route's going to get outside. Like, look at that. It's like, I, people get mad at me for putting out plays like this when EA makes the play that does that already without any adjustments. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, there's no real, you know, this is a man coverage here, so I'm just going to have to work it inside. <laughs> this play really only works in a cover three scenario underneath like that. Uh, a quick throw. It doesn't work deep like some of the plays that I've put out. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much it. I mean, he's just he's just gonna catch a nice little underneath route for a couple of you know close to 10 yards pretty much every time. If you want to motion him out, you can do that too. 
um, you know, it'll it'll make that that little bit more more capable. And then I like to drag Hogan here because if it's a cover two, um, you're gonna need that extra, you know, you're gonna need that receiver to pull that down. So hopefully we'll get a cover two look here. Next up, out of the single back tight way off, we got the bench switch. This play right here, I mean, it's just a real easy setup. If it's a cover two or a cover three or a cover one, really, like right there, that looked like a cover one, I'm going to hit that outside slant real easy. Can't really run man coverage against that. Um, if it's a cover three, though, I can just put him on a streak, although this looks like it's a, it's a cover two. So I'm going to keep him in that, and I'm probably going to hit that, that X route once again up at the cover two side, uh, which is really easy. Um, so, you know, that's that's really a, this play right here is just pretty easy against just about anything you want to run. This looks like a cover two as well. So I know I'm probably going to be hitting that X route again. Like I said, it's just, you know, that's, that's this is just one of the easiest plays to run, and it's one of the better plays this year, in my opinion. So let's go ahead and let's run this one more time. Like I said, I would like to see, like that, that was a cover three, and it didn't really matter. I still caught it in front of the cover three. <laughs> If you get a cover three, I mean, you could just put one side on a streak so you have your cover three side on the one side and your cover two side on the other side pretty much the entire game if you wanted to. Uh, this here, like I said, it looks like a cover three, uh, and I just catch it right in front of the cornerback, and we're going again. Like I said, a little bit tighter coverage than I was expecting, but like I said, that might be that might be the best way to do it. So now you got your cover three side and your cover two side. Next up, we got the four verticals. So on the defensive side, we're going to go random 3-4. I'm just going to run this as is to show you that the uh, the underneath running back, the um, I'm not really sure what the route is, but that'll beat most things. The way that this play is designed, the, 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 the four verticals will pull routes back and the triangle route will be really good. But the, the route that I want to exploit are these outside routes. Now, essentially, you can see how right there it got, you know, I'm going to go ahead and move the ball to the middle because I want to exploit both sides. I don't want to just stick to one side. But you can see how these outside routes, especially if you motion them, will get outside of most coverages. Now, that was obviously cover three. Cover three and cover four is going to have that particular, um, you know, it's going to it's going to do that pretty much every time. If the guy follows, you can tell it's probably going to be a cover one man. And in that scenario, like I said, in that scenario, you can just throw it up because that's going to be an obvious cover one beater. Um, cover two, there might be a safety there. Uh, but in cover one, like I said, when you got that cover three shell, that cover one shell look, um, the second he gets past that cornerback, it's just easy money. So you can steal that all day. But I want to go over individual coverages. I don't want to just go over random. I just wanted to show you that it can basically be just about any defense. But let's go ahead and let's break it down coverage by coverage, starting off with, like I said, cover three, because this one here is going to be a little bit different. They're all going to be a little bit different. But I would say cover three is one of the best uh, defenses this works against. Now, like I said, motioning this guy out, you can see right away, that on this particular form of cover three there's a guy sitting under that route so what am I gonna do first of all I notice that there's two defenders on the left side only one defender on the right side so obviously I want to run to the right side so here we go once again now I, I've neglected to mention too in cover threes typically four verticals always be cover threes up the same that's one of the, the weaknesses of, of, of cover threes uh, if you really want to make it you know you want to give yourself a little bit of a bigger window put the circle route on a streak and then the X route will get open you know it'll just pull the safety a little bit to the left so that you know you'll get you know you'll get a little bit of a more of a throwing lane but I'm still gonna do this motion out because like I said I'm trying to create even more space uh, between the co cover three corner and the, the middle third defender and by motioning that out you're basically you know giving yourself a seam to throw pretty much every time so like I said put the circle route on a streak he's gonna run straight up the field with no angle and that's going to uh, create a little bit more separation for the tight end a little back shoulder throw a little pass lead um, away from the safety is gonna be best but like I said the really glitchy one is this R1 route. I mean, that, or the uh, is that the RB route? That's the one I really want to work because that's going to be open the most. It's going to be an instant open route, like you saw right there. You just have to basically, you know, get just kind of wait. I mean, you're just kind of waiting a second, as you can see right here. Let's just go ahead and we're just going to wait to turn to the field a little bit, and he's just going to be outside the defense pretty much every time. The only thing that really stops this is like a poor, accurate throw, which a lot of times Madden quarterbacks in this year's game can do. Um, especially if you try to throw it too quick, a lot of times, uh, you know, that'll be an issue and it'll, it'll throw over the tight end's head. I also don't have a very good tight end. I mean, this is not, I mean, the Raiders don't have a tight end. They lost Jared Cook last year. Um, so just imagine if I was running this with like George Kittle or something like that. Like I would just be having so much more success and I'm still getting 15, 20 yards without, I mean, instantly. You know what I'm saying? It's like an instant 15, 20 yards. Nothing I really have to do other than just drop back and just, and just hook it out there. 
Um, you know, so you know you can't beat that. I mean, that's just you know plays like that will drive your opponent insane. And this this route on the outside will guarantee that your opponent cannot just pay attention to the streaks inside. I mean, that's that's going to be their natural reaction is paying attention to these streaks inside. So if they start paying attention to the outside guy, you throw it to the inside tight end. If they pay attention to the inside tight end, you throw it to the outside guy. I mean, you, you really can't. Essentially, the only thing you can do is switch coverages, get out of the cover three, and that's when we get to the cover two beater. Say they switch the cover two. Or cover four I got a variation of this that will beat just about every one so by this point in the game your opponent probably ditched the cover three because they couldn't figure it out so I would say a lot of people's their next bet would probably be cover two so let's go ahead and let's pick Tampa two and then let's show you the variation for that now set for this is really simple all I'm gonna do is put the X route on a drag and I'm gonna block the running back that's it motion out the receiver like I did previously and uh, I don't even have to motion him out. I mean, I can leave him inside. It's going to be the same result, just as long as I get a good pass lead. But obviously, motioning him out is going to get him a little bit further away from that safety. But you don't have to motion him. I mean, you can leave it like it as is. You just have to make the adjustment. X on a drag. You know, put the running back on a pass block so you can have the time. And then the pass lead, a lot of times, will get it done, as you can see right there. I mean, I can move the ball back a little bit. You can see how far this ball travels in the air. So let's go ahead and let's move it back maybe like 10 yards so I don't have to worry about that again. But this is a bomb, man. I mean, this is this is a deep play. The cover two really has no no choice, <laughs> or you know, they're gonna leave cover two in a heartbeat, just like they left cover three if they stay in this. So, like I said, I mean, I, I like the I like the roll out a little bit. I did the motion there. You can see maybe that's why I, I had he ran out of the ran out of bounds. So, like I said, I'm not 100 percent sure what's the best way to do it: leaving him inside or motioning him out. They both work. That's the bottom line. But you can see now when I when I combine pass leading outside with the motion um, you can see that a lot of times I'm just I'm shorting myself I'm, I'm throwing the ball out of bounds could be an accuracy issue once again Derek Carr's not a great quarterback um, but you can see I mean like right there when I bomb that up there's just there's cover two he's gonna he's gonna have to bail cover two cover three they're gonna have to bail cover three they're gonna have to bail cover two cover one man obviously doesn't work we saw that as well um, there's really just no defense for this and you can see like this is so broken like he's catching the ball past the safety like by the time the ball lands to the receiver, he's already outrun the safeties. Except we got the halfback stretch. You say necessarily. I mean, we, I have a 10-hour demo just like you guys, so I don't necessarily know which one's best. But it's the same pr principles apply. You can see right there. If I don't bring a blocker across, Bradley Chubb's busting through. You know what I'm saying? If I don't bring anybody additional, you know, I can still make it happen, as you can see right here. I still get outside. But if you watch the replay, you could see that I was fortunate. There was a free defender. Um, one guy kind of blocked two guys because of the angle that I took. So it can work that way. It's just a lot less effective as far as like the percentage of times it'll work. But motioning a guy over so he can get in the way of any free defenders coming in is going to be best. You can see right there. I mean, he chips off of the first guy, moves on to the second guy, get an easy 10 yards. That's the idea. Um, like I said, and the stretch run, a lot of people think it's it's not really, to me, it's not really different than a toss. I mean, there's no motioning guy. But, you know, it's it's essentially, to me, it runs the exact same. I and mean, there's no real difference. I do like the idea of motioning out the receiver on the side you're going, though, because, like I said, there's a passing play that I'm going to put out that's pretty glitchy that has that exact same motion. And if you can get the, the animation that I just got where, where the receiver gets to the outside of the cornerback... Next up, we got the halfback toss. All I'm going to do, I mean, like I said, the play looks the same. If you want that same motion effect, you can try to motion a receiver across the formation. Um, I'm not going to say that that works as good, but the bottom line is, the, I'm going to show you how to run this a couple different ways, but they all pretty much work um, to a varying degree of success. Um, personally, I think the best way to do it was the way that I originally did it, which is I just motioned the guy over into making him into a bunch, um, as you can see right there. I mean, it just basically clutters up that area so I can get around the edge. Um, you know, and like I said, I'm not expecting this play to necessarily hit a home run every time, but it's a very consistent outside run. Uh, you can also motion this guy out like this, um, which, you know, you know, that's part of the issue is this, is this defensive. Typically, the bunch works best because this outside linebacker a lot of times can blow the whole play up. You see right there, he almost did by, uh, you know, just getting past the pulling, uh, the pulling guard or the pulling tackle. I'm not even sure which one's pulling. But you can see how you're leaving yourself out there if you don't have a, an additional blocker, which, like I said, to me, the best way to do it is motioning over the tight end into a bunch. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I motion over, if I motion, I mean, you can run it with motioning nobody over. If you just want to quick snap it, once again, you see that guy gets in the way, you need an additional blocker. So, like I said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to borrow one of these tight ends off the backside and run away from it anyway. The inside tight end, to me, typically works best. And that's because, um, you know, with the pass plays that I'm going to show with this variation, uh, the, the, you know, it's going to be better to motion the inside tight end. But as far as the run blocking goes, it doesn't really matter. Just motion over one of these tight ends, inside or out, doesn't matter. 
But like I said, the pass plays, if you try to mirror it, that this tight end here could pull a corner across where the inside tight end won't do that. But you can see, like I said, I mean that tight end got all the way down the line of scrimmage. He got all the way down the field, made a key block. You know what I'm saying? Springing me for bigger yards. That extra blocker is, is key. And then, like I said, you haven't noticed one time where uh, Bradley Chubb, the outside linebacker, has shot in, mostly because I have an additional blocker over there. And, you know, a lot of times he gets in the way, uh, stalls up the defender long enough that um, the, pulling, the pulling blocker can get to his spot. So like I said, let's do this one more time. Maybe we can get a good look. But like I said, this guy right here, when I motion him over, I was trying to make sure he gets set because I think that's important. But you can see Bradley Chubb, the outside linebacker, he's not getting through like he was before I brought him around. Next up, we got the jet sweep. And they have a jet sweep in this one that I actually really like. I mean, typically I don't like running, you know, sweeps and uh, reverses and trick plays like that because the, the potential benefits can be outweighed by, you know, you getting tackled seven yards behind the line of scrimmage or something like that. But these jet plays, they don't have that same issue. And, and, and you can see it's a pretty consistent play. As you can see I'm getting around the edge. I'm getting good blocking. And I'm getting about 10 yards every time. But typically, if you get caught... In one of these jet plays you might lose a yard or two which is like that's per, i would take that all game you know what i'm saying like if i only lose a yard or two and the potential is a big play like you're seeing now i'm running this i should have antonio brown running this particular route but you can see even this guy who's you know he's somewhat fast i think he's like a 90 something speed so he's not necessarily the type of guy i mean i would love like a tyree kill run or something like that and it'd probably be even more explosive but you can see how easily i'm getting good good yards and then like i said if i get caught what did I lose? A half a yard? I'll take that all game. It's, it, it's not the same type of risk you're taking with your typical end rounds and reverses. So I'll do a trick play like this all game and be happy with it. And like I said, it's, it's a pretty good play. It's pretty consistent anyway. Next up, we got the four verticals. This play here, I mean, all I'm going to do is motion this guy out. Uh, if it's a cover two, like this looks like it's cover two. Um, I'm going to drag this uh, the receiver under and it should give me a throwing window. Uh, good job holding on to it there, but it's going to be a tight window. Still going to be worthwhile. Here we go. Looks like we have a cover one man. Um, a lot of times the RB route will beat that up the side as well. Although maybe it's not a cover one man. It looks like it might be another cover, cover two. Um, as you can see, uh, that drag once again gets that coverage of how I want it. Cover three here most likely. Um, same setup. Only this time I'm going to just throw it a little bit prior. It's like I'm not going to wait until it gets down the field. I'm just going to throw it to him short. Like I said, this verticals play, uh, it's pretty easy. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again. Like I said, this the way he dropped back, I can tell I'm probably going to be able to throw the ball in front of him. Sure enough, I'm right, but it was a horrible accuracy throw. You have to worry about that. Sometimes when you throw it too quickly, that happens. Let's go ahead and let's do that again. Looks like we have a cover one man this time, if I had to guess. And sure enough, we do. I'm going to wait till he turns up the field. Like I said, you're not necessarily going to always win that because he's on a cornerback. But, you know, if you have a fast tight end, you can take that shot. <clears throat> Next up out of the single back wing slot, we got the PA boot slide. So, no no real adjustments needed, but I want to block the running back because I don't want that play action. That could really just mess things up. Um, it looks like we got a couple on man right off the bat, and that's going to be a big play uh, to Samuel, that U route, or that uh, wheel route that he's running. Pretty much is going to kill any uh, any cover ones, or any really any man's, period. Um, I think I like putting this RB route in a drag sometimes if I think it's going to be a cover too, but this is obviously going to be another man coverage. Uh, or, or not, like I said, I thought it was. Uh, but like I said, you know, this, this drag, I mean, obviously he's underneath, they just leave him alone. You can't, can't just let that man just do whatever he wants, so you got to hit him for that drag. If it's a cover too, a lot of times uh, that, that wheel route can do a good job against that, not just cover one. Like, here we go, I don't know if that's a... That looks like a cover one man. Um, so, you know, that's going to destroy cover, any cover one, every, any man coverage. Ultimately, this is a man coverage play, but this B route, a lot of times, can get open underneath cover threes and cover four as well. Next up, we got the stick nod vertical. But here, I can just motion out this R route, or the RB route. Put the uh, B route on a drag, and uh, that'll be my best option. I got a comeback route if I get a man coverage. I mean, this obviously this B route is going to be a good route as well. Good catch and run. Uh, if I got a cover three or cover four, the motion route is going to get open underneath it. Like this looks like it could be like one, it could be one of those right here. It could be a man. It could be a man one or it's most likely a cover three. We'll find out if he drops back, which he did not. And I got this over here. I mean, obviously, like I said, I got that man beater. I got a lot of uh, coverages that can beat man, uh, single man right here. So here we, we can tell we got a man because the cornerback's not there. 
Now, if it's a man, if it's a man uh, zero, the A route's gonna be really good. But um, you know, that's not. I mean, it's not typically gonna be a man zero, but you can see it. It was still a good play. Might have been man cover two the way that safety was over there. Definitely got a safety blitz here. And we'll just throw that out. I mean, that's it's too easy. <laughs> too easy I'm not gonna run all the way to the house on that one so here we go one more time this looks like a cover two so like I said this 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 RB route could be open over to cover two a lot of times they're gonna it's gonna it's just the cornerback's gonna hesitate in that cover two scenario for that drag coming over that's why you put that drag on so here we go one more time so it looks like a cover two, so he's gonna hesitate and get that up top. I think he fumbled, man, but it was it was there. Next up, we got the stretch alert bubble. If it's a man coverage, uh, and I'll know that by the cornerback on the right side. If there's no cornerback there, I'll know it's a man. I'm gonna run it. If it's a zone coverage, the bubble's gonna be a really good play. So here we go. So like I said, we got that zone. We hit that zone bubble. Except there's no if there's a cornerback on the other side, I'm gonna hit that one. Said no cornerback over there, so I'm gonna hit that stretch. You know what I'm saying? Real simple, real simple read. And I'm uh, like I said, no, right there. Like I said, they're re they're reacting, they're following the run. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that bubble screen. Get a nice easy catch and run. Cornerback on the right, so I'm gonna hit that bubble screen. So he's reacting late. Said so there's a cornerback there, so I'm gonna hit that bubble screen. Got my block set up. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just super easy, super easy reads to make that to make that idea, to make that um, you know, figure that out. So here we go, we got cornerback's backs. So if I want to, I can run that. You know, I could have easily did the bubble screen as well. So here we go, one more time. Except so we got that bubble screen. Real easy reads. Next up we got the stretch alert X looky. So here we go. Gonna, we can we can throw this ball back against the grain. Um, as you can see, I might be able to get outside. <laughs> but you can see, I mean, it's just a stretch play with a pass play attached to it. You just have to hold X if you want to pass instead of run the stretch. It's best if, if there's, a, you know, if you got a man coverage, obviously running to this side won't have a cornerback. It's, well, not really. That's not true. So, I mean, this running to this side would make the most sense if you have uh, the outside edge. Uh, other than that, like I said, I mean, throwing back across your body, a, a decent play. They're both good plays. It's just you just have to, to see, you know, what the defense is reacting to. You just have to see how the defense is reacting for the most part. I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, if they're dropping back like it's a pass play, you typically want to run it. If they're dropping down like it's a run play, you typically want to pass to the to the receiver. Like I said, right here, I mean, just did it a little bit late. Let's, try, let's do that one more time. Be shaking them off. It's a pretty easy concept, though. So I'm go ahead, like right, say, right there. Second drops down, I'm hitting that pass. Second that linebacker jumps in like he's going to play the run, I'm hitting that pass. Next up, we got the PA deep cross. This play here, I'm just going to streak uh, the uh, the X route, and then I'm going to put Olsen here on a drag, and that's it. So now I really have a high low across the board, um, as you can see right there. I mean, Olsen was the guy that got open because it was a man coverage. This isn't going to be great against man coverage. This is really a levels play against zone. Um, you would think that, that that B route would beat that, but it really doesn't. So like I said, Wave has got across the field. I had to throw it a little bit early. Due to um, the pressure, but like I said, this is all about you know. This is just going to be a uh, a zone being played, and that B route. I mean, your your user opponent. That's a really rare route, so your user opponent's not necessarily going to follow that. They're probably going to follow these drags across the field. They'll probably follow the tight end because there's really going to be nothing else in their area. If they drop out to the receiver, I'd be surprised. Like I said, I mean, there's just there's no real no real man coverage. You see how tight the man coverage is, so you really don't have that. This is not a man play by any means, but like I said, for zones, 
You know what I'm saying? You're gonna get this. I mean, you're gonna get this pretty much every time because that's such a late developing route and a, and a good route at that. Next up, we got the PA draw shot. This whole play is meant to beat cover one. Um, you know, I don't really need to do like I could smart route that that uh, comeback route, but I'm really just going for this one anyway, so it doesn't really matter. That comeback route really, or not the comeback route, but the, uh, I'm going to call it a zig route. I'm not really sure the stop and go. Uh, what that's really going to do is just pull the safety to the side and allow me to uh, throw it up for this guy over here. So basically any cover zero, cover one, it's going to get beat by that play right there. And last but not least. So next up at the single back wide trips, we have the PA zone shot. This is a cover four beater. This play takes really no uh, adjustments at all. Uh, you just want to buy time. Uh, I did that by running. <laughs> and you can see how I just throw it up over the, the coverage for a touchdown right there. So basically, um, if you want to, you can put Samuel on a drag so you give yourself a high-low series of checkdowns. Um, you know, like I said, you don't, just in case you don't have the time or you want to attack a different area of the field. But this is a one-play touchdown. Uh, if you choose the wrong coverage, I should say, if you choose, if, if you pick this to be a cover four and the guy comes down to cover three, then obviously you're going to want to hit one of these other routes. But realistically, you can hit the one play touchdown with these adjustments uh, just as is. I get sacked on this last play. But you want to be close to the line of scrimmage because this is like a 60 yard ball you're throwing here. So I'm just going to wait for this cornerback to, to cross that side there and then I'm just going to outrun the coverage. So, like I said, real easy play. One of my favorite cover four beaters. You have a lot of options with the drag and with the RB route just in case you pick it against the wrong coverage. But it's all about timing. It's all about timing when you throw it over this safety. Like I said, I'll go ahead and I'll show, I'll show the, uh, the route. You're essentially just waiting for him to cross this. Once he gets inside this safety, you're just throwing it. This is when you throw it, you know, over in the direction that he's going, pass lead it, and just run to the ball. And, you know, no, nobody's going to catch it at that point. Next up, we have the Salem. This play here, all I'm gonna do is put the RB route on a, on a streak. I'm sorry, on a slant. Um, I can motion over McCaffrey if I want. You can see it'll it'll create a little bit more space for the slant because that's really the route that I'm going for. As you can see, he just comes open underneath the pulling streak. Uh, which, you know, that's that's really one of the, the big plays. But if you don't, I mean, like right there, I mean, the streak, you're really going streak or slant. Those are your two biggest options. And then McCaffrey is the check down. You also have the, the B route there is a pretty good one as well. Um, you know, a lot of times this is a quick hitting route. I tried to squeeze it in. Obviously, it didn't work. Um, but, yeah, this is definitely, um, you know, these are, these are your best options and then right here. I actually think this route over here too would be better as a comeback route because now I have a really good man beater, a really safe man beater play, and it doesn't really get into the to the you know the rhythm or the timing of any of these other throws. So I always have that as like a safety blanket. So we got one more time, and like I said, comeback route. You know the spacing's still perfect, so didn't mess with that at all. Go ahead, we're gonna do that. I can make, I can make the motion the same way. I said I can tell the motion's probably gonna be there. You know what I'm saying? I gotta take that instant, instant shot. You know what I'm saying? So that's to me a really good play. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.